wheeling and dealing, man. <laughs> wheeling and dealing like the micro <laughs> machine, man. It's April 20, 22nd, 2021. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Crutching Iron Podcast, and we are episode 471. So we confirm that. I mean, it always makes it easy when we follow it up with an even number, like 470. Like it makes it easy for me to do that. Plus, when we're on time, uh, doing it Mondays and Thursdays. It's like we always have for the last five years. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Again, welcome. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in, uh, hope you come back. Uh, see us again. Hope you come back. Yeah, and if you haven't, go back. We have 460, or four, excuse me, 470 other podcasts in the archives uh, to go through. Mike does an awesome job of outlining those, uh, giving you the topics that we cover within the podcast. And if you've listened or you've already peaked, we cover it all. Uh, we cover a triathlon and we cover a whole lot of life. Everything in between, how they affect each other, how they complement each other sometimes, how they can take away from each other. Uh, Mike and I, as both uh, coaches and athletes, uh, just hear our experiences. We're not uh, we're not experts. We are definitely not professionals, but we are uh, experienced and uh, at least attempt to be wise in most of our decision making. But we've been doing this. <laughs> we both for have a, a little gray in our beard. Yeah, man. yeah. So we've been like, doing, I see shots fired over there. <laughs> like you don't even have a beard right now, so I'm looking I around. I'm like, it, I wonder man, who I was like, man. around. You look svelte this morning. You got well, you got the hocus back on, so I'm not going to comment. Uh, but you got one of those. I know. Like, I, I'm pulling white together everything. White V neck kind of Hanes shirts. at like you know. Uh, What's that? What's the older dude? Like the guy, like everybody's like, you Mark know. Sisson? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the guy that's supposed to be like grease, they got like grease kind of look right now going on. Like you got the, the, the tighter pants on, like the white kind of muscle shirt, um, like you know, the muscle. natural hair. And then you right. got the hokas. <laughs> totally. I like, know, man. I got to get with my shoe game. I hey. got to figure it out. I, I mean, Flip flop. You're the flip flop guy. I, try I am that. the flip flop um, guy. It's and it's flip flop weather. I, Even though I don't it's 33 like, this know, morning. Penny loafers or anything like that. Nobody should like penny loafers. Like, you know, if you <laughs> listen, if you start, let me tell you this. Like, how did I know that? Our, our podcast like has face. been has been resilient over the course of a pandemic and five years and doing this twice. But if you start rocking penny loafers and khakis with pleats, then this is over. I will. It's I'll done. do. I'll do. I won't even do a spinoff podcast. I'll just walk out. And we'll be done. So that's um, like that's a deal breaker. When I, you know, when I'm ready to end it, I'll just come that's in. Right. I'll know, you know, like you always have those. <laughs> it's like you know, thumbs up on the text. Exactly. Like that's it's when, that's when it's over. When you walk in, I'm like, man, is he ever going to give this up? You'd be like 69 years old. to be like, I was ready to retire five <laughs> years ago. And you'll walk in one day with your, with your, you know, best, you know, uh, Jim Harbaugh look on walking in with your pleated khakis and your loafers and be like white penny loafers. Be like, oh, be like I'm going right. to Florida. Be bro. like, finally, my God. Like we do as well have to push the podcast back. We'll start probably push the podcast up. Anyway, uh, we cover it all. We cover um, some micro run in depth training. We'll do race recaps. We'll do race previews as we've been doing this year because racing is back and we are rolling. Uh, I spent all day, not all day. I spent yesterday Zoom for our athletes uh, that we do once a week. Every Wednesday we'll do a one hour Zoom for our, the athletes that we coach and I covered the kind of what to expect for racing this year. Uh, having gone through that experience for the most part at Texas and having athletes do that. We got a lot of races coming up. Um, St. George 70.3. You got Ironman Tulsa coming up. You got Gulf Coast 70.3. You got loads and loads of like uh, Olympic distance races and kind of like hybrid distance races coming up. Like it, it's on. Racing is going to be packed. Like it's so fun and energizing um, you know, to have and see. And so we'll cover all that. Um, for the most part, we just kind of sit back, relax as, as best friends, coaches and athletes ourselves that, that are still trying to figure out, have an open, honest discussion. Sometimes we'll go into our Facebook group and check the, the, uh, pulse of the community in there. If you haven't been a part of that or want to, you can search crushing iron group and answer one simple question. We'll let you in. Um, I will say we've had a lot of uh, requests and obviously acceptances the last few weeks uh, with a lot of good info. Like the answer to the questions, like, you know, really, really good. Like yesterday, I can't remember who it was, but he asked to get in the Facebook group. And, uh, and the question is pretty simple. It's like, what do you like about the podcast? Which is, uh, I understand can be um, quite time consuming for people to kind of sift through and figure out what they actually do like about the podcast. Um, and he said that Robbie finally knows the number uh, the podcast episode around. Like, see, see, you listen. See, I get that. Um, you know, because yeah. you, you get a lot of, uh, you know, boss and stuff that try to get the weasel away into Facebook. Or so hop in there, be part of the conversation. But outside of that, we don't do sponsors. We don't do ads. And our only agenda is to keep you happy and healthy and hopefully engaged in your endurance sports journey. Yeah. Should we? Um, no. Nope. I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. Just we. That was for the gray beard comment. We don't have to announce Peppery. the date, but can we just talk about like because a lot of people have been asking me if we're going to do like a the date. What do you mean like Chattanooga? Nobody cares. Ironman Chattanooga course kind of weekend. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We we yes, we are. We are. Um, we talked about that this morning in our uh, conference meeting, in our conference call with our investors. Uh, we went over. They were asking <laughs> if we're going to know. Yeah, we uh, we did. We talked about that. That there is a need for it. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity. We'll do it sometime in, in either July or August. We'll we'll look at a weekend. We'll pick out like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and we'll probably do like a, you know a Friday uh, in hub where we go over the course and Ironman racing kind of go over a lot of details about the course itself, do a little bit of riding and running on Saturday, do a little bit of long run the course on Sunday, make it easy, make it simple, make it super affordable, but we'll, we'll probably try to get something out no, next week at the latest after that, but we would definitely will do that. Um, and I also posted in the uh, closed, I guess it's not really, it's kind of closed Facebook group that we have on uh, the crushing iron group for the podcast about the coaches that we have. Um, and, you know, I just want to make it you know very clear. We have four outstanding coaches um, outside of myself. Uh, Mike uh, obviously has been doing an awesome job the last few weeks and months. He's taken on more athletes. We got Jessica Jacobs who does an outstanding job. And we added two new ones, Nicole Winger and Phil Jones. So um, I am not everyone's cup of tea or cup of Joe, as I said this morning on the Facebook group. So, um, you know, and that's the reason we, ha- we have more coaches is because we, we feel like we have a good philosophy and a good and, and a effective and, and appropriate and responsible way to coach athletes to ha- keep them happy and healthy. Um, but it's all about, you know, meshing with the right personality and meshing with, you know, and having a person that you can connect with. And, you know, some people, you know, can't connect with me with that is a 100% because I can't connect with everyone either. So we want to provide options and we've, we've done that. So make sure you check those out um, and shoot them an email or shoot us an email or even me if you want to and ask like, Hey, this is my personality. If you, you know, who do you think I'd mesh well with? Um, and I'd be happy to steer you in the, in the right direction. Well, that'd be nice of you. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> nice. Do what I can. Yeah. No, uh, I am uh, really enjoying coaching. I'm really messing with a lot more athletes now. And uh, if you got a race coming up at the end of the year, it's three months away or six months away. Just, you know, if you feel like you might want to have a coach or somebody to kind of support you and guide and be there and, you know, uh, listen to all the questions and answer them, just hit me up at crushingiron at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. Either way, no big deal. Yeah. Just kind of moving ahead. Him up, page him. It's all out there. It's pound C two six. Do you have a topic for today? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You do? What is it? Uh no, but I, I do. Like I, would, it, right? I have something that I. Do you have a topic? Topic. I, mean, I can always. I always kind of generally I, have a topic, but you look like nah. the way that your shaved beard and your you look fresh today. So I'm gonna. If you have something, let's no. But I had something a couple weeks ago that I wanted to bring <laughs> up. Is it a resentment? It's just like an yeah, area. Is this an area of grievances we're going to have on the air here? No, but just something I see a lot is athletes. I, I just think it's an interesting little point is like, I really, you know, started out slow. I didn't feel it. My legs are heavy. I didn't want to, you know, didn't, let, but it really turned out to be a good workout. And I just, I want to talk about that a little bit because we see it so often. And I know we have talked about it, but as you get further and further and deeper into training, I just think that's so super common. And I don't know if I'm trying to like get people not to worry about it or understand that it's just part of the game or whatever, but like, it's just such a common comment that I see that I thought it would be something to at least talk about. And then we can maybe let's do it. Fly off into a different, like we always do. (laughs) Yeah. You know, but I mean, seriously, like, uh, you know, maybe common things like that, that, uh, we see a lot of, you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, like I think that there's a tendency when you, I don't know, we grow up and, we, and you hear all these coaches saying, you know, just you got to push and you got to dig. Like every sport you played, it was always like dig deeper, dig deeper, dig deep, deeper. And, you know, so you have like, I think that's built into a lot of us as far as, you know, oh, let's get into doing triathlon. And then all of a sudden it's, man, I got to really push it here. And uh, I always got to push it. But that's not the name of this game, really. You know, it's like you don't need to like grind it out all the time and just like hammer it i mean it should feel good very often and you you don't need to feel like completely exhausted after every workout and things like that so i i just think that there's something about the general mindset of you know especially when we think about getting in and doing an ironman and how like impossible that may seem in the beginning or uh you know like it really seems like, I don't know how you can do that every single day, but like, it has to be enjoyable, you know, uh, it has to feel good a lot. And it has I to think, excite you. Yeah. Like, I think that's one of the biggest things that 
you know, I think we oftentimes like, you know, we, you know, I had this almost the exact email exchange with an athlete this morning. He emailed and said, you know, Hey, he's, he's in the U S there's not a lot of races that go along around him. He's like, yeah, you know, we have, a, we have a race. He's coming to our camp in June. And then he's got a race. We went in October, late September. I was like, Hey, I saw rev threes having a race. Like, I feel like I should do it because, you know, there's uh, you know, give this huge long list of reasons why, you know, he should do it. You know, it's, it's close, you know, we're fairly close and I just don't have, don't have that many opportunities this year. So I feel like I should, but I'm just not really excited, but I can't really put a finger on why. And, you know, and, and I guess it's kind of like typical fashion of me. I responded with an email. And I was like, well, then why are we having this conversation? And like, you know, because if it doesn't excite you, right, it doesn't get your juices flowing. Because I mean, the fact of the matter is we have opportunities every single day, right? We have uh, opportunities to come across your plate at work or come across you if, if you're a single, like with relationships or like you have these, but if it doesn't, but you, I think we all feel to a degree, especially if you're a triathlete, if you're a triathlete, I have to do an Ironman, right? It's my obligation. I can't really call myself a triathlete unless I do a full distance Ironman, which is ridiculous. Okay. Um, but we, we, they kind of feel like, obligated, like I have to keep going up in distance, right? Like, a, or you can't just stay doing sprints and Olympics because that's your happy place, right? That's where you excel. Maybe it fits into your life perfectly. There are so many athletes out there who would be so much better off, happier, and frankly, fitter and faster if they would stick to the distance and training for a distance that fits their life better, right? Like you're a super busy person, you travel a lot, but you know what? I'm going to sign up for an Ironman this year and I'm going to stretch my life as absolutely paper thin as possible and stress myself out about missed workouts and misses, but I feel obligated to do this. Not because it excited me, right? Because it, I just feel like I have to, everyone else is doing it, so I should do it, you know? And that's kind of the mm -hmm. mantra. If, find something that excites you, that fits in your life. And, and who cares if someone else doesn't think it's exciting or doesn't think it's anything like it's your own journey. It's your own story. So like if the excitement pieces, I think is a really huge part of it. Cause that's, what's going to get you out of bed in the next one. That's also what's going to make is going to make you and allow you to make the best decisions. Like you were saying about, you know, like, you know, it's not, should be about crushing yourself in workouts. And that's when you, in my opinion, experience as a coach, when you see people like feeling like they have to crush themselves in workouts or overextending or not taking days off, it's not because they're excited. It's not because they're happy. It's because they're working. They're kind of like on the defensive with their plan or they feel this immense sense of pressure and this immense expectation or, or a lack of self-confidence that they can't finish or that the so-and-so is doing this workout and I'm not. That's when you see people make bad decisions. People who are in a really, really good headspace with their life and with their training and with the races that they signed up for and how they all kind of complement each other they generally make good decisions. They just kind of let the the days off and the missed workouts just kind of roll off their back, mm -hmm. move on to the next day, and just kind of generally keep a, a higher level of overall happiness and, and, and fitness for the most part. Yeah. I like the obligation thing too, or I don't like the feeling obligated <laughs> right. thing. What well, you I said, know. I mean, because I think excitement's one thing, and then the, the other side of that is obligation. If you wake up and you're like, man, I, I just feel like I have to do this, or... You know, you're a guy that's more on a, a schedule than I am and a routine. And I think a lot of people are on routines and stuff, but not, we're not all like on perfect routines. And then sometimes, you know, shifts change and different weird things are happening. And it becomes very difficult, I think, sometimes to kind of stay in that groove. And but then it's like, man, you wake up and you have an early shift and you got to get up at 3.30 and do a bike. I mean, that that feels like obligation a lot of times. And if that's sort of like the way that your life is rolling that can that can wear you down right and I mean that's the beauty of what we're doing at least in my perspective is that I can walk out here after this podcast and go yeah I feel like riding right now or whatever and I and it's sort of that accord Cody Beals like what do you feel like doing today what excites you today what feels like it's going to hit the sweet spot right now and that to me is like what it should be you know, but how do you do that? I guess when you have that, I mean, it's a lot easier. I think when you have a regiment and you go to bed and you know, you're going to wake up and you feel like, Hey, I feel good today. I'm going to go ride, but I'm sure it's not always the same. Um, but finding that excitement quotient without feeling like it's something you have to do all the time. And then it's just wearing you down over, I don't know. You know, it, it's, it's all, it's about what are you trying to fulfill? Right. It's like, cause I, and I read, you know, obviously, hundreds of, of training peaks comments a week and 
you see athletes and some athletes will say, and this is, you know, especially true on like a longer run and it doesn't know all runs. Right. And even mostly all rides, um, very infrequently swims, but mostly rides, especially this time of year when the weather's really nice and you'll see, you'll see a couple different kinds of comments. You'll see people say, you know, they'll go a little bit long on the ride. They'll go for, you know, like two hours and they'll end up riding three, which is no big deal. You know, and they'll be like, sorry, coach. Like I just, I was having so much fun today riding and the scenery was great. I was with my buddies and I just kept going. Kudos, right? Mm -hmm. Big thumbs up. Go for it. I'm glad you had a blast. That's awesome. You have that side of the, of the coin, which is I think a positive, like I was enjoying the moment. I didn't want it to end. I felt like it was a net positive, not just for me physically and what I'm gaining, but also mentally and emotionally. It was like a, a charge in a, in a feeling that you just didn't want to let go of, then continue on by all means. Sometimes it happens to run too. It's like, I just, I got in the zone. I got thinking that feels so great. I was on the trails. I, just, I ran a little bit longer and then came back again. No big deal. On the other side, and, and you probably know who you are if you're an athlete that does this, no matter if you're coached or not coached is like, I feel like I had to do more today or I added on 30 minutes cause I missed my 30 minutes from from, from Monday, which is not how training works. Like that's not really how you know, the stimulus works and you don't, t- you know, allocate 30 from Monday and it's the exact stress level you're looking for on Wednesday. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't, it's not spread evenly over the week, no matter when you put it. Um, you know, for just a quick reference, like if I, if, if you missed Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you took Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday and slammed them all together on Friday, would that be appropriate? No, it wouldn't. Cause you're in four sessions in a day, which it was supposed to be spread out. Like look at it this way. It's like, you know, do you want to sleep on a bed of nails or stand on one? Right. And the more that that's how you look when you stack things in a week, but you see athletes or the, like, or you see athletes say like, I, I felt like I had to go harder and longer today. Cause I just don't feel like my, you know, my fitness is there. I, I'm getting worried right about, you know, my race coming up and like, those two, you know, examples come from vastly different places and, and not just like their heart usually, but like their psyche, like where they are. And that's something I think you always kind of have to keep in mind is like, why do I feel the need, right, to have to do more? Like those are always like really important words I think you look for as a coach. It's like had to, wanted to, needed to. Um, felt like I, you know, should, um, you know, those are all words that I think you should, you know, that might seem very innocent on the surface, but then you look at them and you're like, okay, well, what, you know, what, what kind of obligation and pressure are you putting on yourself, right? To like go through the motions or, or get extra in or, are always kind of feeling like you're not succeeding, but you're always just trying to catch up, which is a horrible place, right? To, to live and to train is always feel like you're, you're trying to catch up. You're never going to get there and you always need to do more. You always need to go harder. Like, cause you never feel like you're succeeding right at anything. Cause you're always behind or you're playing catch up where I need to do more versus the guy or, or the girl who's like, I was just in my, my, you know, my grown group this morning. We just had the best time. We we're just chatting away. And so it went a little bit long. Good for you. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad you were not like in just the workout mode. You were in the moment. And same thing for writing. And I think you see that for the most part in writing is like, I just went a little longer. I was just having such a good day and just felt so good. I just wanted to keep going. Then good for you. Like, no, do you want, do you want to do that every single day? Probably not, but that's, it, it's the place that it comes from. And I think, you know, a lot of athletes have seen their approach to training and, and what it means and what they need from training really, really change over the last year, year and a half. Um, because right now you see a lot of, of, you know, on Facebook and social media and even some of the athletes that I work with, you see, you see a lot of burnout from tr- from using training and, and triathlon as like a re as a way of just kind of getting by through the pandemic and through you know being stuck at home. It was like it was a way for people to cope with what was going on. I feel like there was some semblance of normalcy in their life. To feel like it was some sort of um, you know some sort of structure that they could you know tap control over because everything else is being, you know, inhibited or changed or whatever. And then now that the kind of life is, you know, back to normal for the most part, for a lot of people, they're like, and now I don't need that anymore. And it's like, oh, I can take a breath of pressure. I don't need that pressure, whatever. And like I had a conversation with a couple of athletes last week and I said, I said, I want you to take the next two or three weeks off, do whatever you want. Don't care. Come back and see me. Like not because they're failing, but because you can tell that, the intention behind their workout was more obligated, right? Then I really want to do this today. Like it might not be exciting. It might just be like a zone one or zone two ride or run or swim, but I want to do it because I'm just happy and it makes me happy and it fits in my life. Well, and, and generally speaking, it's just, it's a positive, 
it's a plus to my life versus, you know, you see a red, then you see a, a 50 minute workout or a 50 minute workout. There's only like 28, you know, six minutes and 28 seconds that are done of it. And they comment and they're like, I just didn't have it today. And you're like, I see this, like you need, you need some time, like you need, or you just remove some of, some of the sport you remove, like an athlete that's doing Muncie in October. I could tell was having some problems, like just motivational problems doing biking and swimming and just, she's a natural runner. She's always ran. It's her first love. Um, I'm known her for seven or eight years and, and you can just kind of tell that they're in it generally like a very happy, like, you know, like I'm all, but we'll always get it done no matter what doesn't like, you know, getting a red or young train peaks. And I, the next week I put in there and I put just runs in some couple choice days. Um, and she sent a big email and was like, ah, so you noticed, um, that, yeah. you know, and I was like, yeah, I did. Like, you know, I noticed, you know, and, um, and, and changed things up a lot. And so I think though, and the, that's the thing is like, that's fine. Like it's so impossible to feel like you have to be on, 24 7 365 whatever like I, I know for me personally I think I've discussed it a few times like I don't know that I would be as you know fresh mentally and emotionally as I am right now about racing and training had I not taken I don't know two three four four to six week kind of hiatuses from triathlon the last year and a half two years um you know even after Texas 7.3 November was canceled like I took like November December off and didn't bike or or swim at all um like you we we need that but it's about it's about keeping the excitement and and, you know frankly it's just about doing something that you really love all the time Mm. yeah sorry about that I know it's (laughs) it's middle of the day I haven't had any coffee it's in like three hours it's funny because when it's on me you start to I I I pick out things. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get on that. I'm going to get on that. <laughs> then, then I, then then I don't shut like, my then mouth. I forget everything you said, but I'm just rolling with it. And I think the one thing there is like, you know, if the girl you just referenced, it's a lifelong runner. That That's something that, you know, for lack of a better word, that she has sort of mastered in her own domain. So master of her own domain. <laughs> so it's like, but cycling and swimming, or it can be anything if we're not good at it, you know, and then that's the thing I notice a lot is when I get mid season, I start to run well. And, you know, I've trained, if I'm doing a fall Ironman, I'll mid summer, I'll be like, all right, it's starting to come, you know, but to get it to start to come, if you're not like used to doing it your whole life, I mean, it's almost like you have to sort of relearn again and get back up to speed. And if something's not easy or does, if it, if it feels like it's confusing you or bogging you down or whatever, then it becomes a hassle. It becomes harder And it's more difficult to get into. And I think that, I mean, a lot of us obviously need to be backed into a corner. I mean, that's kind of where I'm getting at right now. I'm about 20 weeks out from Chattanooga full and I'm sitting here going, okay. Uh, I, I, you know, I have nowhere near anywhere I've been, well, at this time of year, probably in the last eight years. So I'm kind of thinking, okay, now what do I got to do? But I'm also thinking, you know, I was thinking the other day that even as, a little training as I've been doing, I know how to do Ironman racing. I know how to do halves and I, and I kind of feel like I could probably go do a half tomorrow. It wouldn't be pretty, but it's just sort of that in your system understanding of how to do it. And it doesn't seem so overwhelming, but there's a fine line right between doing that and just going out and doing it. And then, you know, this idea of like how you're saying, you know, I feel like I, I should do more. I have to do more on a particular workout and that's so like confusing to me sometimes because we do so much over the course of 20 weeks and you know you feel the need to do 20 more minutes on the bike because you missed a bike two weeks ago or what or earlier in the week I just don't quite understand it you know I think we're frankly in Ironman training and the scheduling that we do I think that for the most part we probably schedule like top in, like, you know, what? if you're going to do a 14, 15, 16 hour week or whatever and peak, that's enough. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like there's so many variables outside of that, like, you know, uh, rolling and recovering and like drinking enough fluids and eating well and all these kind of things. I don't see how adding another hour of to a 16 hour week is going to make a difference. It could, in, but it could easily topple the whole house of cards, you mm-hmm. know, or at least get you behind the eight ball in, in, 
something. If it's a run, you went out and ran, and all of a sudden, suddenly you got an IT band issue, and you got blah blah. blah. What is the point? You know, like yeah. I, don't, I don't get that. You know, so I think there's a a natural like. Well, when I got in the sport, it's like you're doing Ironman. Well, I heard they train 24 hours a, a, a you know week or something like or 20 hours a week. How are you gonna? So you have 20 hours a week. That may be one random, not random, but one week during the whole cycle. But the rest of it is not anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But but we have this thought like, well, I need to be able to do a 20 hour week all the time. Right. It, you know what I mean? And if I can't, then I'm not keeping up with training. So I just think that's an interesting thing because like, you know, if I was even doing eight hour weeks right now, I think I would, could do an Ironman probably next week. If I had a schedule, you know what I mean? Like had a string of those for like 10, 15 weeks, I'd probably do it. Not great, but I'm just saying. You always think you can pull it out of the bag. I really do. Yeah, even really with a too. bad shoulder. I mean, yeah, I know. You're just like, you're I like, swim one day yeah, would hurt in, like hell for a today. month. <laughs> yeah, you came in here and like with crutches in a wheelchair <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sure I could pull. I think I could rip a 5K under 20 today. Like, I think I, st I, think <laughs> I, I still, do under 20. I think I've I never still done got that. it. No, I mean, like, there's, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, in triathletes in general, like, they always kind of think, you know, more is always better, you know, but it's about how much more and when you do more. And, like, if you ask me, if you did, like, you know, pick triathletes to be on your team and, you know, to race well, and you're like, all right, you can pick from, you know, this group of a, a group of group A athletes who for, you know, year round, year round average between 10 to 14 hours a week, you mm -hmm. know, and then they might peak 16 hours for, for an Ironman, you know, three weeks, that's it. Or would you take the group that's trained five to six hours a week for basically the entire year? And then for like eight weeks, they did like, you know, 16 to 18 you know, hours a week and really got up there. I'm like, uh, I'd take group A every single day of the week. That'd be exactly. all of my picks would be group A about, because it's about what you do throughout the entire year. You know, like in my opinion, like for most athletes, it's healthy in a lot of ways, especially depending on how you structure the training is like, you should be within striking distance of a 70.3 within like a four or four or five week block. Like that's how consistent you should train. Like, you know, cause some, and sometimes I have to say, well, I know why am I doing these longer things? So, so far out from, you know, a race and like, yeah, you don't need to be crushing five hour rides, you know, six months before your race, but like, you know, two hour, three hour rides, like months and months and months. after something, Those are good things. Like three hours on your bike is better than one hour on your bike. Like, you know, you need to have that kind of general overall base, especially if you're a person who's, only covering, you know, 12, 13, 14 miles an hour, you know, like that, this is, this is a, you know, you want to become more efficient. You want to become strong. And that takes time. Like everyone, everyone just assumes that you can just like, you know, achieve things within one training cycle. And then you're done. You start over. That's why people regress. And that's why people never improve is because they just kind of stock and repeat the same plan over and over and over again. And don't do really anything in between is like, you need to be like, that's, that's why you coach as an, that's why you should coach at least is, to, to see and, and promote and, and put athletes through like a consistent level of progress, right? Year round, right? You, they don't need to be going and trying to be peaking, but it's about getting better year round. Like if you have a job, like you're not like, well, I really only need to be good at it, right? And work on it these four to six weeks out of the year. The rest of it, psh, you can do whatever. Like it really doesn't matter. Okay, well, then you might still, but you might be good at it those five or six weeks, but you won't be near as good as you could have been. Like, it's about, it is, it's about being consistent. And, and no, do you have to kill yourself year-round? You know, do you, do you need to have breaks? Yeah, sure. Like, we give our athletes, like, basically the whole month of December do whatever the hell they want to. Um, you need that time. And if they're getting the appropriate dose, and they're never going to feel, like, over, they should just be in, like, you should just see, like, your overall baseline. That's what about base training is, like, your overall baseline level of fitness should rise Every single year, not just, oh, I got to go through my base phase uh, before my build phase and my peak, like, and I can't really do anything before that. Like, you know, they get stuck in the training peaks annual plan. Like, I can only this, my, I'm like, if you can do it, then do it. Because it's, all it's going to do is make you better, get you to where you thought you never could be faster. And then you just kind of keep doing it. But again, it's about, but you can't do that, nor will you be able to sustain that kind of focus and training if, you're not excited about it, right? And you're not engaged with it. You're not, you're not feeling optimistic about it. It's not something that kind of gets your juices flowing. Like, and I, and I, th I think it's such an interesting, 
you know, a psychological experiment or a study you need to do with like, or just, you know, a poll to take for athletes is like, because for me, like some races will get me like, will get my juices flowing like crazy. And I don't really have any reason why, like, it's just something yeah. about it. They kind of, I was going to ask, it me. just kind of gets you it, for something. It's just like, I just, it, whether it's the timing or the feel, or you've had a good race or it's like, I, I really, really want to do this race. I'm really focusing. And again, like I think a lot of it as with all things in life, it's about, you know, when worlds collide perfectly, you know, for you to, to, to kind of find the perfect race you want to do that also coincides with you being in a really good place personally. And then also feeling good about training. And you're like, ah, then you're totally dialed in versus what most people do is that most people, not most, a lot of triathletes when they, and people in general, when they, when they kind of go and grab and, and search for, you know, a greater this or a big, huge change in their life, they go and commit to something totally irresponsible and, you know, unattainable. Not that, you know, you can't do anything you want to in life, but that's when people like, again, I think there's always like a direct correlation between, you know, the void that you need versus the void you're signing up for or the void you're trying to like, you know, like that's, they're always proportionate to each other. That's when you see people sign up for 19 Ironman in one year or an Ironman and they're going through like a really, like that's the, that's not the answer to add more stress to your life. Isn't the answer is to add more stress. Like, but that's what people do. Like they think, Oh, I think I'm, I need to really, really, you know, it's like when you people see people do extreme dieting, you know, they last like four days, right? That's like, that's why, you know, people who, are serial dieters and do things like that. They'll, they honestly, for the most part, they end up gaining weight over years because what happens is, is you go so hard and you're so, you're so strict and you're so obligated. You feel like to not have this or to only have this and only eat at this time. And I can't have this that you're restraining yourself and restricting yourself so terribly that you might lose six pounds right over the course of a week and a half or two weeks. But then you absolutely wither away psychologically you know emotionally and physically and then you go you, you have your breaking point of like you know 19 pizzas in one week and then you feel bad about it, and then you feel ashamed and for the next two weeks you just like eat whatever the f you want to not only do you gain back the six but you put on an extra three and then you go back and you'll be like oh, i gotta go i gotta i gotta do it again and you repeat the same cycle. And then after six months, you're like, wait a minute, I, tr- I dieted four or five times, crash dieted, and now I'm 10 or 12 pounds heavier. And you're like, well, I can tell you why, right? Because you, we, we reach for these extremes when the, the usual answer is like, you know, eat, eat, eat more fruits and, and, and veggies and, and, and work out and move. Like those are generally like the easiest ways to do these things, the things that make you happy. But we always reach for like the most complex thing because that's you know frankly that's what's sellable right is if it's extreme or it's short right or it can happen overnight right you you can lose 14 pounds in three days um and i'm like well who's coming in to chop off my arm because i really would rather not that happen like it's all it's it's about it's not about the hack or the short term or something crazy it's about just you know being annoyingly consistent with everything you do in life well obviously that's something you know, if, if we were to really get into that, that psychology stuff, or we need to have like a guest on to kind of go into it, because it's sort of like, as you said, you know, we do stuff that feels good. And whether that's a go a 30 minute run, and then you're like, man, that felt so good. I'm going to just keep running. And it feels so good. I want to feel better. I want to have another cup of coffee because this, that one really got me sharp and I feel good, but I need to be sharper and gooder. And then you just keep going. And that's sort of like how we do it. And, you know, I'm, I, I am the worst at consistency for the most part. It, it could be, uh, you know, I could do that vegetable fruit thing and then the consistent work on that feels, but then sort of like, you know, like lately I've been trying, I've been doing this salad thing where it's like, I'm just going to eat a salad a day and just see how that baselines me. Right. And the next thing you know, I'm like, uh, man, I really feel like a pizza tonight. <laughs> it's like, and part of me is like, okay, that's okay. Just have a pizza and don't add anything else around that. And then just keep going with salad. But I think it's very difficult to change the biochemistry sometimes for people. And this, this concept of uh, addictive nature being representing a lot of triathletes, I think is where a lot of that stems. So it's like this idea, Again, it's sort of like, man, I felt really good. That three-hour ride felt good, so I just needed to go six, and I wanted to feel even better and better and better. 
And then it just wears you out. It's sort of like you find a good stretch. You're like, I'll see you you guys later. I'm just going to stretch all day. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, because this feels so good. And I'm just so very interested in the idea of like understanding that, man, that felt really good. And that's enough. The idea, and I'm sure you've. I mean, I can obviously. That. I can obviously I mean, that's like drinking as a, is you know, like as a recovery, perfect you know, person recovery. It's yeah, like, like we all drink, and it's like you can't get enough. Right? Yeah, because you know? one to me is insane. Like to people that can have like exactly. One, like I tell people that all the time, like well, you so don't get it. Like you, you abstain from that. Yeah, because I can't process. Yeah. So incapable. You know what I'm saying is like. If it's, you it's, can't stop running, you maybe should abstain from that process. <laughs> right. Well, the thing, well, I think like you brought, you know, that's the thing with me and alcohol obviously is like, it, you know, I think it's insane that people can only have like one or two drinks. Like I'm not wired like that. There is no one or two. It's like the first two I have on the way to have three or four more on the way to go home and have three or four more. Like that's the way that I am with alcohol, obviously. And so that's why I don't do alcohol, you know, for a lot of other reasons. But, you know, this is, I think on the same, on the same path is like, I think a lot of us search for a solution when we're, when we're really uneven, we're really unaware of the question that we're asking, you know, like whether it's trying a new diet or trying and or signing up for a new race or, you know, changing your training methods. It's like when we, when athletes, especially with people in general, when we feel conflicted to a point to where we don't really have any answers, you know, to, until to a lot of things that we always go, well, this has got to be the answer. This will simplify my life. This is what I need but you're not addressing the problem, which is like, what is the question? You know, and like I had this specific conversation with an athlete that worked for two years and um, we emailed back and forth like two weeks ago. And, and uh, this athlete was like, you know, I think I, I just need to take a break for, for, you know, a few weeks. I'm just, I'm not feeling it. You know, my, I'm, I'm struggling, you know, to fit things in. I feel obligated. You know, I kind of, I see training peaks and I have to do it. I think I'm just going to kind of get back to my roots, you know, with some, with some uh, weightlifting and, you know, some, some stretching and some doing this stuff. And, of course. and I was like, okay, you know what, do whatever you need to do, man. Like, you know, like I, I there for you, whatever you need to do, however it looks like. But, you know, to me, it sounds like, like, I'm not sure, you know, what makes you happy, you know, not just in training, but in life, like, is it, because it feels like you're searching and then use it. And when you search, we just gravitate and grab onto the, the quickest answer that might be the quick, that spe- seems and feels like, well, this might be the quick fix. I don't really know if it's going to be the right answer, but it's what I'm going to pick anyway, you know, or whether it's, you know, changing coaches or getting a coach or, you know, signing up for a race, like this has to be, because I don't really want to, you know, really, really think about what's the reason behind it. Same athlete emailed me, I think 24 hours ago, was like, you're right. Um, I found the same problems fitting in weight training and yoga. I haven't done any of it. You know, like, and I was like, mm. I was like, buddy, dude, like, I, you know, I, you know I mean? Like, I don't care what you want to do. Like, I don't care if you take up polo. Like, that's, you know, whatever makes you happy. But to me, it doesn't sound like you know right now, not just what makes you happy, but I don't know that right now you feel and you are happy. And I think that's, is the most important thing for you to explore right now. It's not. And, and again, like that it's triathlon. And, and like, if, if it's your hobby, we always pick that first, right? Cause it's our biggest focus in life, but it's also the reason why so many of us got into the sport was so, eh, we can kind of put off the things in our lives that we really don't, we really don't want to deal with. And we can just focus on triathlon and not focus on me because that doesn't sound like any fun. Like who wants to work on themselves and like, you know, our, you know, un, you know, open up the closet of our, you know, our, our traumatic past or the things we're going through. Like, man, I'd rather just sign up for an Ironman and, and train and like and dive yeah. full in. And then when things collide or things cross paths or something comes up or it just bubbles up too much and you're like, yeah, like triathlon can only consume you so much before you just get consumed and then you're still left with triathlon no longer fills a void or distracts you it just becomes you know something that's that's the same way you've always been which is maybe unhappy or depressed or anxious and like it's just it's very important i think for people in general because again like we do this like you know people you can always tell when somebody's kind of searching or like this. I'm like, that. I'm like, don't sign up for that. That's a bad idea. Like, I'm not sure what you're going through in life right now, but this is a bad idea. You know, like I can tell you this. No, don't do it. Um, but it's, but ultimately it's about being happy and doing things that, you know, will, will fulfill you. And who cares what it looks like? Who cares if it's, you know, if you pick up collecting stamps, that makes you a happy person, makes you a happy person. Who cares? You know, but it's about, it's to me and same thing with training. It's about asking, 
It's about figuring out what the right question is and what you're really trying to answer before you just grab onto what you've made up is this is, it's gotta be the solution, right? I, I, this has to be a solution. And then you look back and you think, and you look at your training and you're like, man, but I've, I've missed more workouts than I've done the last six months. Okay. Well, let's probably start there. That's probably the reason why you might may or may not be where you want to be right now. Let's not nitpick why you think you should have more intensity this week. Well, you know, we have to have a cake first like this. We it's always, I think it's always important. It's a good exercise for us to always can look back and think, well, why didn't I want, why didn't I excel here? Why do I want to excel here? The more questions you can ask of yourself, the better, even if the answers might not be pretty, they're usually the right ones versus just grabbing the next, you know, sponsored ad you see on Facebook. That kind of, that's why, that's why people do them because people, people are scrolling through social media and they're struggling. They're trying to kill time. They're probably looking for something. They're like, Oh, I think that'll work the 10 minute, you know, the 10 minute workout week to drop 95 pounds, click 1099 done. And then three weeks later, we all know what happens. Yeah, man, that, I think the, the search is really for feeling good, right? A lot of times, I mean, just like a clear mind, uh, an understanding of who you are and what you are and what you want to do and just feeling good in general. And I think obviously triathlon becomes a vehicle for feeling good because it's moving around it's exercising and there's a endorphins and things that go into your brain and it does make you feel good a lot of times but that's when that you know I think we have to understand that shut off valve it's like be the able it's sort of like walking away when you're Michael Jordan and not like playing till you're 90 or like you know that that graceful exit but think of it on a daily basis with your workouts it's like just stop when it feels good. I mean, like, yeah, we prescribe workouts of certain lengths of time. And, you know, I, I if, if, you're, if your ride is for three hours and, and you feel really good at two and a half, but have questions as to whether or not that would be a good idea to keep, just do two and a half. Like that, I think that switch is absolutely one of the most important things to understand in triathlon because Agreed. we can't, go too far I mean, because you're you're flirting with disaster if you know like if it's like how do you keep that mind happy balance and if you can get off your bike and feel good and and be like hey you guys want to go grab some lunch and then go to that process and feel good about that and it's like man you feel good and you didn't overeat and then that's you know how do you cut that switch off and then I, I feel like going to work in the garden and then it's like you feel like going to work in the garden? Well, maybe after lunch, you know, <laughs> after we go out to lunch, sometimes I feel like going to work in a garden or you're maybe you feel like crocheting or whatever it is. But just the ability to stop at the right time. I had this exact internal dis- debate yesterday with myself. Um, <laughs> I love when you have this. Yeah, I did. Like, you know, I, I had the exact, you know, and I think like the biggest thing to ask athletes is like, you know, is that 30 minutes really going to do you good if you're not going to do it every day. You know, it's like, you're not going to look back and cross the finish line and be like, dude, I crushed it. And you want to know why? That's because three and a half months ago on that Thursday. Yeah. I rode for 30 minutes more. You know what? That's, that's what nailed the race for me. No, it's probably if you rode 30 minutes more every Tuesday and Thursday for nine weeks. Yeah. That'd probably make you better cyclist, but not one time. So yesterday I was on the bike. I ran hard yesterday morning. Um, and then hopped on the bike and I had an hour and 15 scheduled. And there's so we finally got, we'll talk about this in the podcast. We finally got our the C26 condo up. It's like 50 feet from the front door of the hub. We got those things when we had our first guest last weekend, more people coming in. It's like all almost all the way booked for May. But so I wanted to go back and as you know, and I wanted to like fool with a thermostat. We have these like nest thermostats that our builder put in for us um, and that were giving me a headache because me and technology don't don't mix. And I was like, all right, so I got an hour and fifteen on tap, and I'm at an hour, and my thought is like, dude, you gotta do one fifteen. I was like, but Hmm. If I do 105, then that'll give me 10 extra minutes to not feel stressed about not getting it done. And I can kind of take my time, you know, because I had to pick up Hayden. And I was like, I just kind of it. I was like, what's what's going to be the net positive getting off 10 minutes early? Right. You know, and getting these things done and being more relaxed and not being stressed about it and kind of taking my time or doing these 10 minutes of easy riding left at the end of a workout and being stressed about not getting the stuff done, I was like, this is an easy one. Like, get off 10 minutes early, right? It was, And it did. It made, like, a huge difference in not feeling stressed and, like, just being relaxed and getting things done. And, like, those are just, like, when you think, and I think the question is, like, always, too, is, like, when you're like, I, want, I, need, I need to ride more. The question is, like, why? 
why do you really need to ride more? What was going actually going through your mind? Was it, but I really want to do well in October and November. Okay, well, you know, do you think this is going to inhibit that? Like 10 minutes is going to hurt that? No. Now, if you, you know, if it's cutting 15 to 30 minutes off every workout for if you're four months, probably that might have a little bit of an effect. Um, but if it's about overall stress, then it's about, you know, overall stress and it's about reducing stress. It's not about making you more stressed. So I know that if I had gone 10 minutes more and hit the 115 or even gone 120 because, you know, those extra five minutes, that really shows that I'm really committed. Then I would have been more stressed and I'm like, and I probably would, the rest of my day would have been stressed because I would have had, I would have raised my levels up. But instead, it was pretty chill and relaxed. So I call it an, a, like a huge overall win where I think not doing it was a giant positive over forcing myself to do it. Mm. Well, you, you created a transition. And we talk about transitions in life and in triathlon and everything like that. You, it was interesting what you said there because you decided that what you were doing next, you mentally went into that and that helped you get out of what you were currently in in a way that made sense and it felt good to you. You know, it's like if you, you know, it's like, I think when I'm going my best I, and I think probably most people are like this, they sort of wake up and they kind of do a similar morning routine. And my thought is, is, you know, like if, if somebody's waking up and they like to do yoga or whatever in the morning and this is how I look at it a lot. That's why I'm a big fan of yellows in training peaks is because it, to me, it shows a little bit of a like, all right, let me take it this direction. I don't have a lot of time. A lot of times it becomes time. Like I see that a lot in the pool. I didn't have time. My lane got shut down or whatever. I had to run. But to me, it's the effort. And I've talked to, I think I've mentioned this before, but I had a yoga instructor once that said, if you just, you know, every, if you want to do yoga in the morning, that's great. But if you only have five minutes and you spend five minutes doing downward dog, that'll change the way you look at your day. And it's just this sort of little thing that kind of puts you in the right direction that sort of takes you from bed into the world. There's a transition piece there. And in your case, it was get off the bike, cool down, think about what I'm doing next with the, the thermostats. And then I got to go pick up Aiden and I got a little brick. It's like a adult transition. life, baby. It's adult life. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's what a lot of us do is sort of like run it up to the edge on everything. You know, I got to get off this bike and run to a meeting and literally have get there by 30 seconds mm -hmm. versus <laughs> pull it back a little bit, have 10 minutes to kind of wipe your forehead at least or something, you know, or like kind of mentally, you know, we, it's like the end of us getting out of the swim and you, you kind of start mentally preparing for the bike the last few hundred yards or whatever. And not before, because that's when you start swallowing water. Remember? Yeah. I do but remember. if you can <laughs> But that's it's, it's part of it. You start the transition. The transition doesn't technically always start in your head the minute you step foot in transition. You kind of start mentally rerouting your wires or whatever to go to the next place. And I think that's a really, I mean, I'm glad we kind of stumbled on that or you brought it up is because I think that's a really good way to look at it. And instead of pushing further, it's just like, okay, how could maybe pulling back just a hair, giving me that time to decompress from what I'm doing and sort of gear up for the next process. And I think because if you don't do that, the next process becomes another heavy weight that starts bringing you down, right? It's yeah, sort of don't like want a overlap. recovery, yeah, recovery you, between. Yep, exactly. You want recovery between like, it's about, you know, not having things overlap to where you feel like you're not doing any of them, you know, good. It's like, Oh, well, you're going to pedal for 10 minutes more and not be engaged because you're already thinking about how stressed you're going to be and how up against the wall you're going to be for the next thing to the next thing. And the next thing you're like, wait a minute, this sounds like the last 10 minutes is going to be more stress inducing than not stress inducing. So where's the positive, you know, and I think it's just a hard thing for, I think people to, to, you know, wrap their brain around is, is that, you know, enough is enough, you know, and, and you know, I, I know it might sound weird coming from a person in recovery, but you know, enough is enough, you know, like, and that's, you know, like you, you have to know when is, you know, there is always too much of anything. And, and I think, that's something that we have, you know, it's become unfortunately like celebrated in life is, is the more is better. You know, the more money you make, the more hours you work. You know, I work 60 hours a week, man. I only, I only sleep like four hours a night. Well, that sounds like hell, you know? So like, <laughs> congratulations, but that sounds miserable to me, mm. you know, or, you know, I, you know, it's just stretching ourselves thin to me is, is the perfect rep recipe for the easiest way to break. 
And that's what you see with people who overextend themselves with races and with jobs or, or personal relationships is like, that's why you're breaking so much because you're stretching yourself so thin. You're not really taking any time to strengthen yourself or give yourself the rest and time it is to recover. Like, no wonder you feel weak, right? It's like, no, thank you. Like I slept till, this is great for me. I slept till 6.30 this morning. Today? Yes. Nice job. Huge man. win. Like went to bed last night at 9.30, woke up at 3.30, which three is always my limit. Like if I see a three, I'm like, dude, I'm going back to bed. If I see a four, oh, I get tempted. I'm like, eh, it's basically five. And that's when I usually get up. So I just get up and get a little bit of work done, have a cup of coffee, get, you know, do whatever. I went back to bed and woke up six and I was like, oh, thank God. I feel so much better. Like in I'm functioning better and I'm happier and like I'm able to do more. Work. It's, 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 it all adds up, right? It's, and it's not, it all adds up when it's appropriate, right? To a positive. It's not all, it all adds up to more time and more hours and more training and more fitness. That's not always what it adds up to. That always it's up to adding too much more, which is when things break and things crumble and you have to start back over, you get injured over train or just generally burnt out. Mm-hmm. And I always think that I feel like I have to mention that we're, <laughs> I feel like, I was like, just pull it back, just pull it back a little bit, you know? And I, I just really believe that overkill is not the answer. And I don't think that pulling it back means that we're saying that, you know, don't go for it in your race or don't like try to be the best triathlete you can. know that. Well, you do, you do. Yeah. All right. Go for it in your race, baby. Like you rip it. But it's, I mean, it's you being know, it's being go for it when you feel like going for it. If you don't feel like going for it today, tactically know. responsible. Yeah. It's how you should be. Tactically responsible. I love how you look at me all the time. Well, they know that. They but I, mean, <laughs> I just feel I don't want to come off as like the soft guy podcast half the time, you know, whatever. If you think people think we're soft, I don't think people think we're soft at all. I think that's, <laughs> if you've seen some of our reviews, you're like, that guy is an asshole. That's like, a I, don't think, I don't think, I mean, not me. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's really me. They, people love you. Um, you know, I don't know. Me that come, do it's, it's me that comes off as the, you know, the, he's way too, you know, uh, old, I think one guy called me old man, get off my lawn. I was like, well, you know what? I love my lawn. So do get off it. You know, no, I don't think you'll know. That's about being responsible. It's about being responsible and, and also having fun, but also doing, but that's what allows you to do your best, right? That's what allows you to be the guy that we talk about all the time at the swim start, smiling, laughing, ready to roll. And that's the guy that you're afraid of, not the guy who looks like paralyzed by expectations. Like that's not who you want to be, right? Because no matter what happens, it's probably going to be less than what you expected, right? And so that's that's how we want you to be. And plus, again, like triathlons are complement your life, not be your life, you know. And and that's like, yeah, like we don't give out the most like salesy sales pitches. Like we don't give out fancy training. It's pretty consistent, and you know, like you do the same thing over and over again. But it works, you know. Like that's just it. Is you, you stick with what works and. You know, if you can, and that's part of it, is you can stick with what works for a very, very, very long time, then you're going to see the best results possible. And that's just, that's just the truth. Uh, that do a good job of kind of re, you know. Rebranding. Yeah, re, we're bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're dear hard asses. We're dear hard asses. Do that 25-minute chill run. You can shut your mouth. I mean, you know, sometimes we can be that way. It's like, I mean, we recognize it when you're being weak. Me when I'm being weak, you can look <laughs> at me being, like I'm being weak. <laughs> well, when we're being weak, yeah, I'm soft. Weak, like, so soft. Come, come on, man, soft you're being soft. soft. You got to figure on. that we need, shit we out. Need some, Just get it know. going. Like when you were emo. That's last true. Week. My email last week. No, when you got emo on me last week. Oh, what did I do again? You walked in and you're like, man, I just got to tell you, man, I really love you. <laughs> and I love all the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, uh, yeah, we, we, which we, uh, you never know what you're going to get, man. You never know what you're going to get. Um, do you want to talk about the hub? Experience. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to. Yeah, if you quit getting all emotional on me, like I uh, saw your I mean, tear coming down your cheek, and which is I can part feel two the music. This could be. I oh, know. I swear to God, I'm gonna walk into Mark and have like a little bonsai tree and like picking at it with like tweezers over here and with like some Zen music playing and some <laughs> green tea. <laughs> Nothing wrong. Lava lamp. Nothing wrong. <laughs> lava lamp. Nothing wrong with that. There's some black lights in here. Uh, we do. We um, we finally got. I think we mentioned it months and months ago, but our uh. We finally got our condo up and running, uh, sleeps three to four, uh, it's three stories. It's about 50, it's brand new. It's about 50 steps from the front door of the hub. Um, and we had some athletes come in town this last weekend, uh, and stay in it. And we are adding, uh, things by the day. It's now has its own smart bike inside of it. Uh, it is, it's decked out. It, it is, looks really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. Chris Henniger at Henniger Homes. Uh, dun, dun, nice little dun, shout out dun, who dun, actually dun, listens dun. to her podcast. Did an absolutely awesome job and got it done 
right on time. We appreciate that. But it is awesome. And so um, I would say for May, but we can't because it's honestly like 80% booked um, and it's not on Airbnb or anything. Um, but right now, and we're doing this for our athletes too, but if you – we talk about hub experience in the past. Like coming to our training facility again, it's 2000 square feet uh, indoor. Then we have a, we just added on uh, the backspace is AstroTurf. We'll be doing some stuff out there with camps and, and events and, and training as well. But um, you know, the hub experience is a swim analysis. You get a bike fit overview, bike testing, run analysis and run form. We have a lounge in the front with couches. We have a coffee bar. Uh, we got Norman tech boots. Uh, you get that whole experience. Plus, your night in the condo uh, for four seventy five total, which in my opinion is a steal. Uh, the condo Ooh. itself is like is Are really you sure really you nice. Walk that back, man. Is I mean, not, I mean, it's the, too late now. You once you've spoken, it's like we'll see this receipt in like four years. You'd be like, well, you told you you, you know when you like grab someone off the rack, you're like it says it's thirteen cents, and you know with some like a really really nice piece, and then you're like, but you marked it for thirteen. It's like that's actually. Thirteen hundred dollars, and you're like, yeah. "Sorry, you got to honor the price you put on it." Um, well, we, yeah, we should say that the price, uh, as of this pot, whenever in the future, whatever it says on the website is what it really is. Yeah, but for, but for now, now, but yeah, book if, if you want to book it and, and travel in, and a lot of people are traveling now, and you want to place stay for you know not just one night but multiple. Most people are coming in like a Thursday or Friday and staying the weekend, but uh, we're booked for for May. But you know, basically, if you want to book with us between. Uh, between June 1st and the end of October, um, then email us and we'll, we'll send you photos of the condo. We'll give you more info on the hub visit itself and, and try and get you booked if we have available dates. But you can email uh, c26operations at gmail.com for that uh, and go over those things. But come on, come see us. It's, it's listen, it's, it's beautiful out. Races are happening. People are traveling. We have the space. Come see us. Yeah. The condo yeah. is sweet. And if, if we happen to be here and it's a weekday that you book it, Come on over and use the treadmill. For sure. Even if you don't do the hub experience. Yeah, or come. If you're a traveling business person, this would be an excellent stop. Yeah, it's your basically your own gym. Just come see it. Um, to Florida with a few kids. <laughs> Florida with a few kids. Two, two kids. Or send them and then come see us. Well, we do have an air mask. We can probably make it work. But yeah. Yeah, I'll just send them to your place. Um, <laughs> but that's all, that's all we got. As always, we love you. We appreciate you tuning in. Hope you're having an awesome week so too, far. Man. Oh my God. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, email Mike. See, uh, he is at crushingiron at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions, comments for me directly, I am also at c26coach at gmail.com. And again, if you have uh, any questions or want to book time or just need more information about the uh, hub experiences or the condo itself, you can email c 26 operations at gmail.com uh, also go to our website uh it's c26triathlon.com it's a one-stop shop we have for all things coaches camps and community we got our first camp coming up in june um both our june camps have been sold out for months and months and months but then after that we'll start putting up stuff for next year we have a, we'll do a ironman chattanooga training camp we'll release that um or training weekend whatever you want to call it be on the lookout uh, go to the website check it all out again our club membership is ongoing a lot of people have been taking advantage of that here in the last few weeks now that they uh, kind of it's settled in to people. I think that it's time to get into ratio, baby. Uh, and so Mike is handling that and doing an awesome job. That's on the coaching tab. Click down three, click on club member uh, ship and learn more about that. You can also uh, check out our amazing stable of coaches on the coaches tab. Meet them, see if one fits your personality and go from there. Wow. Strong close. That was it, man. Yeah, that was we should start doing that at the top. But yeah. Eat your man. lunch, Jason, Joseph Pleasant. <laughs> that was a strong close wasn't it <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. alright well it's been great man and uh, I look forward to hanging out with you later, later. later. alright see ya